Got a busy show today. We got uh, Bruce Campbell coming in a little while. Florentine in studio playing uh, the waiting room in Buffalo Friday. Saturday, the Palace Theater in Syracuse with his pals uh, Don Jameson and Eddie Trunk. And uh, Sunday, Bell House in Brooklyn, right? Yeah. Oh, God. God. Sorry New about that. Festival. Festival. New York Comedy Festival thing with Ari Shafir's storytelling show. Nice. Very cool. That's going to be good. What's up, Kevin? How are Hi, you, man? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Do you guys hey. know each other or no? Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah. Haven't we met? I think so. Yeah. I feel like Probably we have. Cellar. Probably at the cellar or here and there. Yeah. You've never been on our show? I don't think so. That's... I wouldn't ever remember, wouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of stupid. We should have had you on by now. I know, but it's my fault. All right, well, now you're on, and we'll, uh, Why is it we'll your go fault? from here. Because I never ask. I asked, and he said, yeah, come on on. <laughs> <laughs> that really was I'm, like, I'm always waiting for people to ask me, like I'm seven years old, like, you know. Like, I got to, you know, you got to wait for people to ask you. Be polite. You I'm like, how... fuck that. I got kids and shit. I, got, I need money. You know how bad you just made our show sound? <laughs> yeah, come in. Yeah, basically. We have nothing else ask. going on. Well, Kevin just asked me, he goes, hey, man, do you got, and the last time we were going to, I think we couldn't because we were book solid. Yeah. It was like, it was a few weeks ago. And he's like, uh, how about Knox? I'm doing it like, I'm like, yeah. And we made it work. No, but the, two weeks ago, I asked you like the night before i saw you at the cellar like in the bathroom i go can you put me on tomorrow you go no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, gave him, I gave him like 27 minutes notice <laughs> yeah so then i'm like i kind of like that's why i don't ask people because they always say no you know no we love having you guys in how, how many kids you got two how old three and seven whoa well you live in and you kevin was uh commuting from fucking uh you were in new york and then you would you move to uh ocean city new jersey right yep yeah, yeah. past atlantic city yeah. south of atlantic city yeah that was stupid. No, but I had a house there, and then I didn't want to sell it. And then when I we had a house here, and we had a house in Ocean City, New Jersey. Yeah. And then once um, we my wife got pregnant, or once we had our first kid, my daughter, I didn't want to live here. I didn't want to have two rents, you know. So we decided to move there. But then it was like it's weird down there Oof. in the winter because it's like it's everyone, go, town, everyone right? goes to the Wawa because that's like the center of town. You know what I mean? It's open 24 hours because everything, everything else is just creepy, right. you know. So. It's like a dead... Fucking short towns are creepy they are, they in are. the winter. And all the murders happen in the winter in short towns. And they always and the, everybody knows... Every, the murderer always knows the murderee. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because people just get crazy and they're like, I'm going to kill this... I'm going to kill my roommate or whatever. <laughs> is that what it is? People just go stir crazy? Yeah, they, they go get... crazy. And my wife is going crazy, but I didn't go crazy because I was traveling. So I like living there because I was traveling... I would come to New York, and then when I wasn't working, I was just, like, relaxing in my beach house, you know. But she was going crazy, but fuck her. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but and that's, that's, also that's not my problem. I, I told her to get some road work. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go to the Wawa because you want human contact. Yeah, no, you go to the Wawa. It's a horrible get a, place to go, get human contact. <laughs> and you're, like, loitering at the Wawa because you just want to run into other people, you know. Yeah. Pick up the Philadelphia Inquirer early. So that's also a dry county, right? Ocean yeah. City, New Jersey. Yeah. No booze. You have to go over a bridge and then the next town to get any kind of liquor. Yeah, you got to go to Summers Point. Yeah. I actually met one of my best friends who's a cop now. I met him because he was, uh, I was going over the bridge. I was playing uh, poker at Atlantic City. Mm. And I just, like, got, I, I'd almost won the tournament, but I didn't and I was pissed. So I was coming over the bridge like two in the morning and I, I hadn't had a sip of alcohol. But he, you know, it was like in the winter, he, so he, the lights go on. And I'm like, I can't wait for this because he just assumes I'm drinking because it's, you know, because everyone comes over that bridge, uh, Summer's Point. So he comes up, he goes, I go, give me a breathalyzer right now. Let's do this right now. And he goes, I didn't, he goes, no, I didn't think you're drinking. I thought you, you weren't maintaining your lane. I go, what? You know, so then I was just, I just was made a scene. I told him I was going to go to the, uh, I was going to report him to his, to his uh, superior officer. Yeah. And then I actually went to the police station and he, he said, uh, his sergeant goes, go in there, I'll take your statement. And they were, like, all laughing at me and everything. <laughs> so then I went in, so then I came in. The guy the guy who arrested me comes in. So I think he's going to, like, beat the shit out of me. Like, this is how we do it in a small town. But instead he goes, yeah, I Googled your name, and I, and I think I saw you on HBO one time. So then, like, we took we took pictures of, like, my tickets, because he was going to give me four tickets. <laughs> but they, they waved them all, and they ripped them <laughs> off. And now he's, like, one of my best friends. And the thing was, once I... Once I uh, 
once you became friends with this guy, I became friends with all the cops. So then I could literally like drink and drive down there. You know what I mean? Right. Because they all knew me. You know, and I was like a local celebrity. See, kids, the cops are cool. See? Cops are great. That's why, like, the I, everyone's cool. everyone's take mad from, at cops now. Like, yeah, take it from Kevin cops are such I, dicks. Kevin's trying to get this guy fired, basically <laughs> reporting him, and now they're best friends. That's a that, yeah. That sounds like a good guy. That's, that's a good guy. Yeah. No, but that's the thing. When I put out, you know, all this co this Black Lives Matter, and I guess they do, but. The Black Lives Matter. <laughs> no, the Black Lives Matter thing. It's like everybody's like shitting on cops. Cops are like the nicest. If you're friends with them, they're like the nicest guys. They're they'll, amazing. They'll do anything for you. They're like they'll. These guys in Ocean City, they would like they would tow. Like I was always my cars would like would snow and anything. They would help me out, you know. And I, compared to like show business pricks, yeah. I mean, these guys are like these. They're all saints to me. I don't you know? understand the youth uh, where they're all like, "Fuck the police." It's like, no, you got to figure your way in. Yeah, it's an amazing yeah. world to be no, part of. Poli yeah, <laughs> the police great. are like the greatest people. As long as you're not, you know. So, whatever. Kevin, how did you get arrested? <laughs> how did you get arrested for? He said you weren't maintaining a lane, but the next thing I know, you're at the police station. What did you do to get arrested? Well, he then I was talking shit because I was sober. So it's like, right. so it's like if you're sober, you can do whatever you want. Like if you've had like a a, like a drop of alcohol in your system yeah. the cop you're dead but if you're sober you can basically as long as you don't touch the cop you know i was like i, I was just i made a total scene of myself like i was i said uh uh and then i, I can't remember because it was like five years ago but i was just talking so much shit i was yelling out the window he called for backup <laughs> you know it was just one of those <laughs> things Jesus. where right. no it's one of those things where i'm gonna get my money's worth you know what i right. mean like if he's gonna pull me over i'm gonna and i'm sober i didn't do anything wrong and I just became like a complete dick. It was I, I was like, I can't wait to see you in court because I'm going to eat you. <laughs> I'm not gonna, <laughs> right. even I'm not gonna. But it's still fun to like. The point is, stay sober, and then you could do whatever you yeah. want. At what point you know did what I mean? Like, you could, I told a, I told my friend, I go, you could smash into a cop car head on if you're sober. <laughs> you know, that's easier to do than just driving into a tree with like two beers in you because you could just be a shitty driver you could smash into a cop car like a bumper car and just be like oh well you know i'm a bad driver they can't they that's all i can do is say you're a bad driver but yeah. if you're sober you can do whatever the fuck you want you know <laughs> at what point did they arrest you like what, what point did they go all right one more word and we're locking you up i, I don't know i think i, I said something like I, I i definitely said uh i was just like abusive it was like it was like he was a heckler and i was just like <laughs> right. i said i said everything i could think of you know everything and then he, and then and then uh, he he uh, then he got the the you know they they when he called for backup the other cop came on the other side and I could see in the rearview mirror and I go I go you guys are really doing a good job with this sneaky technique just all kinds of bullshit you know right. anything I could think of it wasn't even funny like I made fun of his name because his name was Coob and I'm like is that does that rhyme with boob. You know, <laughs> like childish no, insult. No, yeah, it wasn't. Like I was, I was already in a rage because I lost the poker tournament, and I was, and my wife was like eight months pregnant, so I was already like, I was having a lot of anxiety about that. Was she right. with you? No, uh -oh. <laughs> she was. Pregnant. She didn't go to the poker tournament eight months pregnant. Yeah, she was sitting by my side at the tournament. No, she was. No, she's never with me. How much did you lose? No, I just I was in a tournament. You you buy him for like a hundred bucks, yeah, a couple hundred dollars, yeah, dollars whatever. Yeah, and then I could have won like six thousand. I had like pocket aces, and a guy had pocket six, and he hit a six on the. Oh, you went to the final hand. No, I went to the, like the final table. Final table, you know? okay. But it was one of those t things in Atlantic City where I was, you know, I was a little addicted to poker for a while. But who wasn't, you know? Yeah, I never really played it, but I, I see guys getting really just roped in fast. Yeah, you, so plus once you can play online, anything you can do online, it's so easy to get addicted and, to. And it's not worth folding all those times. That's why I would suck at it. Yeah, Cause, yeah. Because yeah. it would be boring to me. Yeah, like, I know. Right, people, I got to play this hand. I can't fold another ten hands in a row. I know people who play blackjack. They can't play poker because blackjack you play every hand. Poker you got to fold so much. You know what the uh, the percentage of hands you got to fold if you're a good player. What like, would you guess? Eighty percent. Eighty percent. Yeah, you just fold. See, I couldn't do that. When I you would, start out, you don't be, fold, and then then you realize you're you getting should fold. alive. Yeah. So how often were you going? Um. <laughs> Like, you going no, a no, I would just go and then. But then when I was playing online, so uh, then you play online and you just sit there like all night and you're just drinking, you know, just drinking beer. And then like it's six in the morning and my my wife's like she wakes up to go to the bathroom. She's like, "You're still here." I'm like, "Yeah, one more hand." <laughs> and that's another hour or two. <laughs> oh boy. So you, whatever a guy says, one more hand. Did you lose a lot of money on online poker? Yeah, but you never really. It's always like a hundred bucks at five hundred bucks. You just take it out of your. Uh, you know, out of your bank account, so you're not really keeping track. Right. 
It's like buying drugs, I guess. You don't really keep track. You're like, no, yeah. I'm, I, I don't know. I think I spent some money. <laughs> was she keeping track? I spent a little bit. Yeah, no, she, she doesn't really know. But she, she was not happy. She was just like, well, but she's never happy. No. <laughs> what do you think that's about? No, my wife was like, we write you. <laughs> no, <laughs> I've been married. <laughs> not anymore. No, no, after a while, it's like, you no. Know, I mean, I think you just like find hobbies, you know, like men hobbies. You know, like I don't have a gun rack, or I don't go, I don't go deer hunting, so yeah. I needed something. You find distractions. Yeah. So, so then, what? You guys moved uh, back to the city? No, then I moved to California because I, I got some writing jobs. I, I got, I was working for Norm McDonald, the great Norm McDonald. Love him on the sports show. That and, was a good um, show. I know it was a good show, but he's a, he's an idiot. He's a real idiot. No, he's a lovable, lovable idiot. He's just so. He would, he would, he actually, I was staying, living near, I was just thinking about this because, anyway, so he was, I, I had to drive him home because he doesn't drive, because he's like Rain Man, you know, he, he doesn't have Did a Did he license. ever drive? He doesn't drive? I think, no, no he doesn't I've drive, especially in L.A., he doesn't drive, so. Can you imagine being in L.A. and not driving? <laughs> well, now you got Uber, so it makes it a little easier. Yeah, now it's fine, yeah. Yeah, yeah so. I think he had Kevin. I had to, or Kevin, no, but he right? always Uber has, or Kevin. No, but somebody always has to give him a ride, so I had to give him a ride one night, and I and I was already nervous because he was like my boss, you know. And uh, so then he invites me, he invites me up to his house, and it's like a Friday, so we have off the next day. He goes, "You want to come up?" I go, "But I think it's like a, it's like a gag, like he's tricking me." I go, "No, I don't think so." He goes, "I'm not going to try to fuck you. I'm not going to show you my, my <laughs> he's not, he's not gonna, I'm, I'm not going to show you my etchings. Just come up." <laughs> So I go, so I go, all right, I go, all right, I'll come up. So then I come up and it's, it's awkward, you know? Yeah. And then, so he, he goes, oh, you better go. I go, thank God. <laughs> so then we go, we, we, what made I, it awkward? He just, he was just weird. He's like got cats. And then he started reading something to me. Like it was really fucking, he started reading. He goes, you ever read, you ever hear this author? And he started reading like a passage from the book. He tricked like, you. He wanted to fuck you. <laughs> so then, so, so then on Monday, he's he goes, yeah. Brennan gave me a ride uh, home on Friday, and then we get to my house. He goes, can I come up? I go, <laughs> I go, what? So he he flipped the story. So he's yeah. like, he, he's like, why are you trying to fuck me? I go, no. Nah. But I but I couldn't. I was like, Norm's lying. But you know, yeah. he's just. He's just one of those guys that, like, no matter what, he, you can't. He's like well, slippery. What kind of what kind of house does Norm live in? He, it's actually pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. He's he keeps a nice house. I mean, How I, long did you stay there? Did he so he read you a little story and then what? It was awkward. I'm like, I never told this part. <laughs> I never told this part. But no, he started reading to me. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> he was reading a thing and he goes, "Is this great?" I go, "Yeah, it is fucking great." What am I? I wasn't getting jokes on, so I had to like play along. You know, <laughs> it was like week three, week three of the show, and I was yeah. like, I'm, I wasn't getting jokes on, so I'm like, uh huh, uh huh. But I'm like, I guess this is how he does. He just starts reading. <laughs> Were you enjoying the story? No, stop! <laughs> I've never had a man. I've never had a man read me one of his favorite stories. I mean, it would it'd be better if it was like a like a cat in a hat. So I knew how the story went. I knew right. it was going to end. You know, mm. but this could have gone on and on. So I was like, uh huh, uh huh. What was it, it about? Was, it was terrible. No, it was like real dry. It was like Norm's like this is one of my favorite authors, but it was like real dry comedy. He goes this is my favorite kind of comedy. I'm like, oh you don't remember God. the author? God, no, now I, now I want to know. No, I could find out. I could, yeah. I could ask Lori Joe, his his trusted assistant. She'll know. I feel like he has the potential to be like a hoarder, Norm McDonald. Oh my God, he's got a yeah. He's got every time you hear something, you're like, yeah, then Norm, whatever. Yeah, yeah but he's he's just a funny guy. I love yeah, him. he's hilarious. God, he's a I love lovable. Norm he's a lovable guy, though. He's so lovable. Absolutely, we got a big fan of yours on the line here, uh, Mikey in Jersey. Go ahead. Hey, I just wanted to bring up one of my favorite jokes I'll never forget from Kevin Brennan from his uh, one night stand probably like 10 years ago now. It's when he said, I went to the Puerto Rican Day Parade to get all my stuff back. And the whole crowd goes, boo. And he goes, no, I'm just kidding. I can never get my stuff back. And he got a big laugh from that. I'll never forget that joke. Sir, you butchered Kevin's <laughs> joke. <laughs> what Kevin said was something about this the Puerto Rican Day Parade. And when that happens, I like to go up to the Bronx and get my shit back, right? And steal my shit back. Yeah. Steal my shit back. He was in play. He didn't go to the parade. Why would they carry his lamps <laughs> in the fucking parade? <laughs> but that's why fans are so great. Though. Always... Maybe I gotta watch it again. Yes, sir. <laughs> it was wild. Yeah, watch it again and get back to us. But it says it's your favorite part. joke of all time. I, I would think you would remember your yeah. favorite joke of all time. Well, well, it's the most memorable Kevin Brennan joke to me. But I don't it's a great it's joke. It is a great joke. But, but you took Kevin's properly. joke and you surgically removed the humor from it. <laughs> 
And you made it just a, a, a list of words. No, I, had, <laughs> I, had a, I had a joke where he's, I said, I live in Queens, they're selling crack in my neighborhood, finally. You know, and that was like one of my first good jokes. And yeah. my manager used to always quote, he goes, they're selling crack cocaine in my neighborhood, finally. I'm like, you're fucking up the joke. Right. You hear it every night. They just can't, they can't. Because you're not pausing. No, you're saying crack cocaine. It doesn't eat cocaine. Right. You know what right. I mean? It just makes it more of a whatever. Yeah. But we don't have to talk about comedy. But I'm just saying, even people that are close to you still will botch your jokes. My you know? manager will quote my jokes, and it's it's fuck. It's so hard not to take a phone and just fucking smash them in the head. <laughs> no, because you don't want to hear it. You hear it all the time, anyways. But you not don't in hear front it. of people. Not like I'm your nephew. You can ask him to sing like I did at the recital. It's fucking embarrassing. <laughs> Jonathan will do that. Yeah. Like, and, and Jim does it. And I'm like, dude, don't, don't ever do that. Don't quote dude, me in front does of he me. Make, he does. Does he make you do it sometimes? No, he knows better than that. But he'll like he'll like laugh along, and then there's yeah. no energy being picked up. <laughs> yeah. And it's just. Like, like me and the other guy are silently humiliated for all of us. Yeah. Fucking stop. Uh, he means great. well. He I don't even. I don't well. even think I did that joke in the, at HBO. Maybe I did. I don't know. I don't remember. I well, know my wife. My wife's Hispanic though now, so now it's all come come to roost or whatever. Yeah, how'd you meet her? I met her at the Comedy Cellar. Oh, you did. Yeah, she said she was there with uh, somebody else, and then she said uh, she was actually there. With, Artie was Artie Fuqua was dating somebody. A, a woman, and then she, my wife worked with this woman, so the woman brought her and whatever. And then, but I followed Chris Rock. Chris Rock did a guest set. My wife was like, "You're the best one on the show." I'm like, "Better than Chris Rock?" And she goes, "Yeah." So I basically called her bluff. And then, uh, and then uh, I asked her out. She goes, "Well, you have a girlfriend?" I go, "No, that's just my act." But I did have a girlfriend. But anyway, but we were we were breaking up. So she so went out with her. Yeah, and then uh, yeah. How long did you get married? Because I was surprised when you got married. <laughs> No, I mean, marriage isn't for everybody, right, Jim? Yeah, you're right. You're damn right. Man. <laughs> no, marriage, no, I'm saying marriage is good, but you got to be on their schedule. Like, my kids, it's, you shouldn't have kids unless you're on their schedule. You know what I mean? Working at night and traveling, women don't. At first, they like it. Then they're like, where, where are you going? I'm like, I'm going to Texas. You know what I mean? And yeah. then, they, then they all, well, where, what, time, what time's the show over? Can you call me after? You know, I guess it's better now that you can, like, Skype and FaceTime people so they can right. see if anyone's in your hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then they and then they get jealous uh, if you you know you're sleeping during the day or you don't have to get up. In yeah, the morning. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, oh, you get to sleep in. I don't. You know, like yeah. No, I know, but you, you're right. But you don't have a fucking stand up act, so shut up. Yeah, you don't have to, you don't have to do five <laughs> shitty morning yeah. radio shows. Shut your pie hole. You my son the other day, my son goes, my son's three, and he was like, it's just so ridiculous because you know you get, you do get jokes from your kids. So my son was like, he's three, so he's playing with his penis the other day. So I go, uh, I go, that's usually simply sign he wants to go to the bathroom. So I go, you got to go potty? He goes, no. I go, what are you doing? He goes, I'm tickling my bang bang. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like what? He goes, tick on my bang bang. I'm like, he's been hanging out with some Asian kids at school. <laughs> He's tickling his bang bang. bang, bang. Three. No, I never heard it called a bang bang. And uh, <laughs> no. we, don't, we, don't call it, we don't use that kind of phraseology in the house, bang bang. Bang Literally. bang. How, how long have you been married? Since 2006. It's not going well. No? No. It's probably going to be. Scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best. It's probably like a... <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's like a... A 4. But no, we're still friends, but it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> You're openly friends. saying that it's not going. It's not going no, well. It's going to end. No, no, it's definitely going to end. It's definitely going to end. <laughs> she's a, ma too, she's though, a matter right? of how it's going to. Does know? she know it too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. have a prenup. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah, but it's it's at this point it's like you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, at this point it's going to end. It's just a matter. It's not going to end badly though, because we're friends, you know. Are but, you guys but, still living in the same house? Uh, no. Oh, okay, so oh, all right. Yeah, so, oh, so okay, so yeah. all right, no surprises here. Yeah, but it's but it's but it's like I live close, so right. now I'm sweating. What, <laughs> hap no, what, ha what happens? Like, now you, you got just... three places basically you're paying yeah. for. Yeah, no, it's but you yeah. well, you're not in South Jersey anymore. No, I live in Jersey City. Oh, you're in Jersey. Okay, and, and my and like I live up the street from like I do it like uh, the guy from Coldplay, but with less money. Because that's what he did. He moved across the street from his from Ben Bailey has the same situation with oh, his he kids. Does? Yeah, with his divorce, his oh. wife. He lives like. Three houses away. So they can like see that. the kids. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. I'm there every day. So Chris Martin moved across the street. He had to yeah. give up his great house and start over across yeah. the street. Yeah, that's what you do now. You move across the street. But you know what they do in California? They, they keep the kids. They get three houses. You keep the kids in the one house, and then the, both parents get a house, and then they like heli they call a helicopter, and then you come in. So that, But what we're doing, I just go to the house every day just because my kids, so my kids are like, they just... They just see me every day, but they don't. But I don't sleep there. But even when I was sleeping there, 
I was getting the hotels a lot because my wife was sick of me coming in late and waking the kids up, you know. Wow. And then, so whatever. Did when, when you married for a while, did it just get to a point where you're like, hey man, we're not compatible full time, but I like you as a person. So yeah, no, like I still like my wife. Like we're getting along better now, and uh, and like I really like genuinely like my wife. But it's just like after a while, you just get like. You just get sick of it, you know? You get sick of, like, we fight over nothing. Like, I do a joke in my act, because my wife's a bit of a slob, you know? <laughs> and I'm, no, but I'm, no, but I'm one of ten kids, so we lived in, I like... I love Kevin Bryan. Right, yeah. No, we lived in a military... We lived in a military environment, you know? Yeah. And, um... So we had a clean house, even though we had ten kids. So, so I do a joke where I say you fight over... You fight all the time. Like, we were having sex, and I... We, and we got into a fight, because I groaned. And my wife said, you like that? I said, yeah. She said, what else you like? I said, a clean kitchen. You know. And, uh, <laughs> so anyway, I, 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 uh, we were at our new apartment in Jersey City, and some people saw us at like this restaurant, and they came over. They go, we just saw you last weekend. What's that joke you tell about your wife? So I, they, he made me tell the joke in front of oh, my wife. Oh, how awful. In front of my wife. And then my wife goes, I didn't know that. I go, yeah, I tell you all the time, you're a fucking slob. Like, <laughs> so now I'm like, at least I'm, at least I'm getting jokes out of it. You know what right, I mean? Right. <laughs> so for a couple of days, she cleaned up her mess. And then uh, whatever. Are you, but, a neat, are you a neat freak by nature? I guess I am. ocd like, Yeah, but my, my mom says like all the older kids are real neat. And I think just because we had to keep. Like we were, yeah. had it ingrained in us. Like you gotta. We, it was really military. It wasn't military. Like we weren't military, but everything had it. Like the dishwasher had to be done by five. You know, everything it's had military. to be done on a schedule. You what, know? What, what? Where are you in the order? I'm third. Kids. I'm third. Oh, so they still cared. Yeah, yeah. So they're so those yeah. big families by the eighth or ninth. Kid, yeah, they don't, don't give a shit. Those kids can do whatever the fuck they <laughs> That's want. That's true They've because had it. my my two youngest brothers. When I would when I would go back to my parents' house when just the two of them lived there. Their, their rooms were a mess, and I'm like, what the hell? What is going on up there? And my mom was like, uh, I haven't noticed, you know. Like, <laughs> they just zone out. They yeah. really zone out after a while. Because after a while, they realize, okay, well, nothing's really going to happen, because they think they've got to be real strict, yeah. or else it's going to be total chaos. And they're probably right. They so. can't keep that strictness up for 10 years. Yeah, because it just gets exhausting. For them, know? too. Yeah, yeah. They just they get sick of being like the Yeah, yeah the stiffs. young ones end up becoming the wild ones, for, yeah, for, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, in most you get, cases. You get along with all of them, the brothers? and sisters yeah everyone but all of them but eight <laughs> <laughs> no you don't have to get along you don't have to go along with any of them you know because it's like interchangeable you know and uh my you know neil you know my brother neil sure. mm, and yeah. he's doing he does stand up now which is like a fucking nightmare because uh because it's just people are like because uh, they think because neil's the youngest so he's totally spoiled like to we're totally different you oh, know? Is he the young the, the youngest yeah, he's oh. the youngest of the ten some people are always like, you don't get along with your brother? Like, I, It's not like we don't get along, but we're not like best friends, but we didn't grow up together. You know, He's like 13 years younger than me. So, uh, so I'm more like his dad than his brother. You right. know? What, what are the age uh, from the first to the last? What's it's the, 16 years. S your mom my brother, yeah. was having Damn. babies for 16 Ten years. 10 kids in 16 years. Shit. Very efficient. That's crazy. No, well, it's sick. It's that's sick. Uh, like the, all the... The Catholic faith. That's all that is. Yeah, it's sick. She, like, yeah. now that she probably I, didn't want the 10 kids. Yeah, but my dad had a sweet dick, though. I <laughs> <laughs> you ever see it? My mom said, here's the best part. Here's the, no, I've never seen it. Here's the best part. My mom, this is true. My mom said my dad, they had 10 kids, so that means they had, I don't know how many times they had sex, but my dad, my mom said my dad never said that he loved her. Never, even even during sex. Jeez. I mean, is that crazy? Is that Catholic or what? That is so. That is nuts. And but they, they still, kids. How long were they married? They're still married. No, they got long? married as soon as my dad uh, retired. They got divorced. Do they get along? Not now as, or they not as soon. Well, they're getting along better because my dad's dead. But. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, wait, they got divorced at what age? Like in their sixties. That's cr at that point. Wouldn't you just say ah? No, because my ah, dad, because my dad, my mom got sick of my dad hanging around the house, and then my dad, my mom was like, "Why don't you learn to play golf?" Because all her, all her friends' husbands played golf, and my dad was like, red hair, white skin. He couldn't couldn't be in the sun that long, you know. Yeah. So he couldn't. He would just sit inside and watch the stock report, stock stock market. So my mom's like, so but but whatever. It was it was a uh, it wasn't great that they got divorced, but they waited. <laughs> You know, they waited as long as they could. All the kids were out of the house, and they, you know, they had money, so they were like, "Okay, let's split, let's split it Did up." Did he get any action after his divorce? He got married, and it didn't last long. So. Oh, he went and got married again. Yeah, but he didn't invite any of the kids. 
No. Well, were you guys mad he was getting married, or you didn't care? No, we didn't care, but then it didn't last long. He married someone in his building. And, what kind uh, of woman? She probably was. Philippines? <laughs> <laughs> she probably wasn't stable. He said she had mental issues, and I think he had mental issues as well, so... Because my dad's a little crazy, but... It didn't last long. But he was one of 12, then he had 10 kids, so... Wow, that's then, crazy. And then, he, and then he remarried, and then once he got rid of the second wife, he said... He said, uh, he goes, yeah, he thinks he likes being alone the best. <laughs> he finally figured but he was out. never alone. He was never alone. So at the end, he was finally alone and whatever. I didn't realize you and Neil were so far apart. Yeah. So, I mean, but you guys like, don't really get along that way? No, we get Neil? along, but it's like we're not, well, like, Neil, you know, like, when I, when I would, like, pitch Neil a sitcom, he goes, I don't like sitcoms. I'm like, oh, fancy schmancy. You know what I mean? Because right. he's like, he's like, I like sketch. I'm like, I don't like sketch. So it's, it's not like we were, like, we were twins or we were even, like, close in age. You know, he just grew up differently. When you would pitch him, you mean just, like, saying, hey, we should work on something together? Or? No, like, if, like, when he did the, when he did, um, um, what's the movie that him and Chappelle did, uh, I don't know. Oh, the block party movie? No, no. What's um? I can't remember. No, he remembers the movie, the the pot movie that him and Chappelle did. Half oh, half, 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 half I didn't know Neil was involved with that. Yeah, yeah. No, he wrote it. He we wrote it with Jim Brewer. Oh, and I didn't Chappelle. know that. Okay. He wrote yeah, it with okay. half bakes. He wrote it with Chappelle. So yeah. then, um, so then Neil got a little heat. So then my manager said, "We'll talk to Neil about doing this," and then Neil would do it, but reluctantly. He everything I ever did with him, he did reluctantly. <laughs> But Neil, Neil doesn't like you unless you're kind of famous. Like even your brothers, that's but different. He, yeah, but you're kind of famous. No, no, no. That's not the point. Like, like even now, like Neil's literally a star fucker. And with all due respect to Neil, <laughs> with all due respect, I don't know. If, I don't know. If, with all due respect, which right. means no respect. With right. all due respect. <laughs> <laughs> no, Neil. One time said to me, he "Goes, I think I can date Molly Shannon." Like, who says that? Nobody says. Oh. Most people say, "I think I like Molly Shannon," but right. Neil's like, "I think I can date Damn. Molly Shannon." And then he did, but because nobody else wanted to. <laughs> nobody else wanted to. Because she's a fucking lunatic. Like I love her. She's a girl. She's great and she's sweet, just like you'd imagine. But what makes but her? But nobody says. Nobody says like, "I think I can date." I, I yeah. like his. I like Neil. Confidence. I do too, though. Neil yeah. must be all cock. He said I could date her, and then he got did. It, got it from your dad. He might have got that's sweet, cock. Sweet, <laughs> sweet dick. Yeah. No, but then he had to. Uh, but then he got sick of it because he's like, this, this Molly driving because he he had to watch SNL, and then it was enough for him to say he liked the show. He had to say specifically what he liked about the show, and it was just like, I go, Neil, just you know, get out of that, and then. He wasn't, but he, but she was, you know, he was much younger than her. It was like a nightmare because it was like her son, you know. He, they even didn't look right. What kind he of too young? What kind of crazy is she? She's just like she's real, like neurotic, you know, like you would imagine, you know. I don't think I. I, I don't even feel. I feel bad talking about her. I'd rather talk shit about Neil because. <laughs> Because I'll see Neil, and then Neil will be like, what the fuck did you say? I'll be like, you know what I said. Because I can still beat him up, even if I can't. <laughs> do you even guys ever I... do shows together, like stand-up shows? No, people think we should, but I, Neil, Neil stinks. And uh... <laughs> <laughs> No, I watch it. when I watch his act, I'm like, I can't, I can't. I you don't can't think do he's a good stand-up? No, Neil's no. a good stand-up. He's a good stand-up. Yeah, no, brother. I can't watch it, though. I literally, it's like watching my sister do porn. I, I never want to. <laughs> No, so it's you real to awkward. It? It's fucking <laughs> awkward. Like it's so awkward. Like I watched like a minute one time. He was at the cellar, and I, and I had to watch for some reason. Like I, I was waiting for somebody to meet me there. Was, my friends wanted to. I don't know. And then I watched for like two minutes, and I, and I saw him on, t on Comedy Central one time, and I'm like. I'm like I'm not, not. It wasn't. It wasn't for me. Do you think it's maybe because? Because I like it just as a detached non-Brennan, I watched Neil. I think he's a funny comic. But it, it, when you're when you're related to somebody, you feel like it's a reflection of you. So if they like, oh my God, people are thinking mm. of me. That's exactly what? what I thought. I thought like when they see Neil, they're gonna re re realize how funny I'm not because Neil's gonna remind them. They're gonna be like, wow, Neil's awful. But it reminds me how awful Kevin is too. <laughs> So I'm gonna not get work from Neil doing stand up. No, I guess if I I'm gonna get negative. <laughs> I guess if my brother started doing stand up, I'd feel a little weird watching him and stuff. You absolutely, would it feel wouldn't be weird. a competitive thing, but yeah, but you little. You yeah. feel strange. Uh, yeah. uh, what, uh, I mean, did you guys get along when you were growing up? Yeah, I mean, like I said, he was so much. Just, no, right. no, you don't. You just your friends are like one or two, and then the rest you just fight. Are just annoying. <laughs> You just literally fight, yeah. You fight your way out of that house. Yeah, I'm friends with one of them when growing up. He becomes like your buddy, and then like the sisters usually had the same thing. But then, what does he do? The one you like? He's uh, he lives in Chicago. He, he or he actually lives in Phoenix now. He doesn't do anything. He's like a he, has, he just he never really wanted to do anything. But he's a good guy. He's not like a drug addict or anything. He just 
That's another thing. No one in our family is like a drug addict out of 10 kids, which is weird. Like, nobody, nobody turned to the pot. <laughs> That's pretty good. Hey, we got a clip yeah. of your brother doing stand-up. You want to watch this real fast? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> let's, let's check this out. 12 years Catholic school. Oh, my God. Then I moved God. to New York. <laughs> started hanging out with black dudes. Can you stop right now? What's with the fucking beard? Like, <laughs> like he's 14, so he's like, if I have a beard... Uh, people will take me seriously. I called him once. I saw a picture of him like uh, on uh, on Facebook. He was wearing glasses. Yeah. I go, what's with your fucking fake glasses? He goes, they're real. I need them. I'm like, okay. And then I hung up. But that's <laughs> you think maybe he just he needs them though. <laughs> so he needs a beard. He needs a beard. Do you think maybe you're being unreasonable with Neil? Yeah. Like maybe he's just doing stand up and trying to, you know, he's a funny dude and maybe you're. Yeah, but just... Neil's following me to everything I've ever done. So I'm like, oh man. He's always like up my ass and then he wants to take credit for being doing stand up, you know, or you, something. You remember, he admires the, you. you remember the day he came to you and said, hey, uh, I'm, I'm going to do stand up? No, he never really came to me, but he. He he would did it a little bit in New York, but he mostly did it in L.A. when when nobody was nobody was there. Like he would do clubs there, and nobody was here watching him. Like yeah. guys that he started with, because he started where even his bio's a lie, because he said he started doing stand up. <laughs> no, he, he said he started doing stand up with Chappelle at the Boston Comedy Club, and I'm like he didn't he didn't he was a doorman there. I got him the fucking job as doorman. Right. And then because uh, he was he he were he was going to NYU so and then he became friends with Chappelle because they were the same age yeah and everybody else was so competitive with Chappelle because he just came into town and blew everybody away you know that's that's so, wild. Uh, so yeah, let's see more so do you guys have like a ri like maybe a rivalry or do you feel a rivalry with him that you might not have to feel I don't even know. I don't, do you what? know what I'm saying like no what's like, the question like do you feel like <laughs> competitive with Neil when you probably don't even have to. Like you don't need to feel. Do you feel competitive with him? No, I think also because Neil has more money than me because of the Chappelle show, and then people always bring that up. You know, like like, uh, and then and I'm and I don't really don't even think about Neil that much. You know what I mean? Because I don't see him, and I don't. He was never really like competitively. He was never like a threat. It wasn't like I was competing for spots with him right. ever. You know, but Neil plus, plus when Neil Neil one time and Neil was Neil knows all the stories, but one time uh, I was going down to Boston Comedy Club. This is like in the early 90s to do a set. And uh, and sh and um, I said, Neil, let me do a quick set. He was he was basically, he was in charge of the room. He goes, I can't, I, he goes, they, uh, Barry Katz, who it was his club, he goes, he said, don't put anybody else on until Chappelle gets here. I go, just get this guy off and let me go on until Chappelle gets here. And he goes, I can't do it. I'm like, we're brothers, right? Aren't we brothers? And he's like, I can't do it, brother. You know what I mean? So oh it's like, my God. No, so that's one of those things. I'm like, he could do it, but, yeah. but, yeah. And he was 20, and I got him the job, and whatever. So yeah, he had a choice. Yeah. So you get to a point where you're like, he, but Neil, Neil's a businessman first and foremost. So well, Neil, how many, and in that moment, how long was it before Chappelle showed up? Do you remember? It's probably 10, 15 oh, okay. minutes. And the guy was like, the guy had no material. Oh, uh, the guy who was on. Now, whose side are you taking? Who's no, I'm actually just asking. I, I, I really don't know the story. <laughs> but, I know you a lot longer. Um, I know Kevin probably close to 15 years, maybe closer to 20. And, and Neil, I just met in the last few years. But no, know. Neil's a nice guy. Yeah, I like him. Let's How play often the, you guys talk? Whenever we, whenever I see him, we talk for a long time. But I just don't see him. Let's play the rest of this. The ugly Robin Thick. <laughs> That's his whole thing. Like, I want to be sexy with the fucking stupid shirt, the blue shirt, T-shirt. I mean, the short sleeve shirt on a special. So stupid. If he's trying, yeah, but he's, if he wants to get chicks, he's like, hey, I'm gonna. That's what I'm saying. But who doesn't get chicks? You know what I mean? No, but also the, um, I mean, the fire marshal thing was true. Yeah. <laughs> Because I've done that. But I feel like he's like, I feel like he's like, what would Kevin, because he's not even like that. He's not anal. I mean, he pretends he is, but I'm anal. You know, I, I would be worried about the fire marshal and whatever. But yeah. But he also is like, he does a lot of black, white stuff, which is fine, you know, because I guess, you know, which he hung around with Chappelle, so he does, all, he does know a lot of black dudes. No, I don't have a problem with that. That's yeah, fine. It was it was fun watching you watch your brother though. No, at you, first it's just I like couldn't watch, whole, I couldn't watch Kevin. I, I was watching him. I didn't want to put pressure on him. He was a little so. bothered watching. No, that. the whole look because Neil used to say to me like, "You got to work on your look, man. You got to work on your like." If I did it something on TV, you go, "You got to work on your look. You gotta you gotta present yourself." He goes like, "Cause like David Tell goes up there, you know what he is from his look. You got You just wearing like a blue windbreaker, which I wear all the time." He goes, "You got to work on your look, man." I'm like, "Oh my!" So he would always before he even did stand up, he was always like, "You got to." work on your look so when i see him with his look 
Well, he's I got the look. Look, I know. I want to. Fly, and I want to hang myself because he's always concerned about his look. You he, know, he looks with good the, in the Google images with look the at hood, this. with the hood and the, the puffy you know, coats, the and puffy coat, the hoodies. He's he's, he's got a look. Do you yeah. guys ever say nice shit to each other? Like, hey, that was funny, or that was a great bit, or <laughs> no? The last time Neil saw me, he I did a set at the cellar, and then he comes up to me, he goes, "I got five fixes for you." I'm like, I didn't ask for any fixes. <laughs> I didn't ask for any fixes, let alone five, you little fucking asshole. And then one he, one he gives me, I was only looking for one, and then I go, yeah, I'm looking for something there. And then he gives me something, I go, I go he, he, he said it to me, I go, I don't even get it. He goes, he explained it to me, he goes, 300 bucks if it doesn't work. So and then if it didn't work, if I said it didn't work, he'd be like, well, you probably botched it, Chappelle will get a laugh with it, you know, or something right. like that. Did you try it? Did you try it? I tried it like in a in a abbreviated way, and it, it was nothing. You know, there's nothing there. It didn't really work. No, it was a fucking dud. But I I didn't even get it. So yeah. if I don't get it, how's the audience going to get <laughs> yeah. it? But you don't know? you think he was being nice by saying, "Look, I got some five, you know, some fixes, some tags." No, not the way he presented himself. No, no. He just he didn't say like "good job." He just said, "I've got five what, fixes." What for a me. strange dynamic. <laughs> yeah, I just want to continue talking about this. I got so five. Weird. I got five fixes. I mean, how how would you react if you, after you did a set, boss came up to you and said, "I got five fixes for you." I, I would challenge him to count that high. <laughs> and if he could do it, I'd hear his no, suggestions. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you say if you got some something, you say to somebody, "I got a tag for you." You know, I got a tag for you. Yeah. Even that, it's awkward. Like if I, like unless I really feel confident in the tag. It's the like, way he said it that bothers you. No, he just he the just fixes is very probably like probably not a good word to. Yeah, I got use five for, fixes for you. Yeah. And I was like, well, you yeah. said your dad never said I love you, so sometimes maybe it's hard to present things. Like you know, when you're presenting things to somebody that you mean to be a nice gesture sometimes yeah. the presentation might not be as no i know as and, it neil, be. and in that let's, let's call me. neil up and uh, neil can't win neil can't win if he presents something to him he can't yeah. win well, i mean i'm gonna be like come let, on neil let's call him up and and get you guys talking and say i love you back and forth i think it's the way he said it like if he said hey kevin i, I think i got like five decent taglines for you yeah uh, it might have been different but with fixes, fixes almost seems like sounds he, like your, your joke your is broken yeah, yeah. So that's the way you took he it. might not even said fixes but that's how i heard it okay. you know what i mean oh, all right he might have said i got five things for you i heard five fixes <laughs> so amazing whatever did sarah silverman really uh lose her virginity too? yeah yeah she did of course she, she wrote about she that. wrote about it in her yeah, memoir was, yeah, in 2010 yeah, because I was, uh, no, I was, I was running the open mic at Boston Comedy, and she was an open micer, so it was just a matter, of, you know, because I was, I told people when they got on, so of course she's going to have sex with me. Right. And then it was just that simple. Jason Steinberg, you remember him? I do, yeah. yeah. Oh, he was God. like, I think, he goes, I think you can have sex with Sarah. And then Sarah was like, uh, we had sex, and then, she was young, and then she, the, there was blood on the sheets. Can I say, I can say all this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There's blood on the sheets, so I said, I'm like, sir, you, were you a virgin? She goes, no. Why? I go, because there's blood here. She goes, maybe you're a virgin. I'm like, oh, she's a virgin. Because <laughs> <laughs> only a virgin would not know what was going on. You know, she didn't mean so. But it's, but it's true, because it was in her book. So. so only one time? No, we had sex a couple times. But she was so young, I had no interest in her. Like, even now, I'm not that interested. <laughs> You know what I mean, she was she was never that hot to me because she was too young. She was like eighteen or nineteen or twenty. What's wrong with that? I yeah. was and I. She was just too young. Like she was on. She was. You're not doing a good job of discouraging me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, she would show up in like roller skates, like from the fifties, like like you know those big roller skates and. That's sexy. Yeah, I know. Well, like now girl looking, girl looking back, it looks sounds sexy. Back in the time, and then it, like her her tits weren't fully grown. <laughs> like they were you can tell You're they were still, still like they weren't they were at a, like a weird angle right. you know what i mean like they almost were up because they were so That's new you. she's yeah. 18 they're yeah. gonna be up they were so new that they, they didn't were not fall even, yet they, they didn't go they over the no, top no dip to them whatsoever no dip yet. she looks uh, good in that photo there's a photo of her in green shorts and roller skates she looks delightful oh <laughs> Holy mackerel! <laughs> what she wasn't wrong? dressing like that. What's wrong? But with the you, best Kevin? part was, the best part was, I kind of still take credit for the fact that, because I had no interest in her, and then once I broke broke up with her, quote unquote, then she dated like everybody, and then she would she wouldn't wait for them to break up with her. She would break up with them. Mm. So then she started going through everybody. Like that's what all the like, all the that's when she got the reputation for having you know being a bit of a slut. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know her. Do then. you think I'm so bummed? I know it, and um, but do you think that um, she was like she really liked you, and you broke you broke her heart? No, I yeah, she did like me because she wrote a uh, Dave Jusko. You guys must all know him, yeah, I know right? Him. Yeah. Well, he told she said she really liked me, and so he said, write Kevin a letter 
telling him how much you like him and and send it make it with a mixtape and uh, oh he was fucking with us. so i, I no he wasn't so I, I i read the letter and i'm like i just laughed it was so laughable it was like she was in high school and i was like i had already done mtv half hour comedy hour so i know <laughs> <laughs> I was already like a legend in my own mind. You know I mean? I'm like, I got TV credits, and then and then one time, this, I kind of remember it. Like she was, we were walking down the street, and like a cab was coming. It seemed like a little out of control, and yeah. she said, "I put her between me and the cab." But and then I and then she's like, "Did you just?" Push me and so that you. I'm like, I think I did, but I literally had a taping on Tuesday. Like I was, going, I was flying to Boston or something to tape some some TV show. So my life was more valuable than hers at the time. <laughs> so I, it was just one of the things. I had more credits than she did, and and uh, whatever. So, but she's a good she's a good girl. I still no, she's whatever. great. So. I still talk to her all the time. So yeah, and now she but she literally. Uh, She's now she's dating that actor, the guy. Like she's she's really happy. That actor guy from uh, the sex show on Showtime. The sex show know. on Showtime. I don't know. What sex show on Showtime? Meaning Michael of sex. Is it Michael yeah. Sheen? Yeah, Michael Sheen. Okay, yeah. yeah, I've never. I don't know. I'm just looking at the picture online. Yeah, he's British and whatever. Oh, okay. So she's happy. Yeah. So I kind of. Yeah, I kind of. Not happy about that. She's happy. I hate when people getting... are like. I hate when LA people are just happy because it makes you sick because they're so. Well, if you're happy in LA, you really have a really good life. You know what I mean? You don't. You just. It's just nice every day, sunny every day, and mm -hmm. you got a good career. You got a good boyfriend or whatever. So right. I kind of resent it for that. You find it irritating? Very irritating. <laughs> <laughs> no, it really does bug me. Like when people are like, "I love LA," I'm like, "I fucking hope you get AIDS or something." You know what I mean? Like the, the workable AIDS, that magic AIDS. You know what I mean? So like the twenty year AIDS. When you were out there with your wife. When you moved out there for Norm's show, were you happy then when you were living out there? Or yeah, because no? she wasn't there. I was just there. Oh, she wasn't myself. there. Oh, you left her. No, no, I went out there just to work, and I stayed at Neil's house, and then Neil wasn't there, and then Neil came here, and then, um, so she wasn't there. But then once the show was over, I said, let's just move out there, because there's more, there's more action out there. And she had been out there, so she liked it, so we went out there. But then that got crazy boring out there. LA's crazy boring. Was part it, of LA? You can't, were you in? Like West LA, but you can't, yeah. there's no hangout. Like, you can't really right. hang with anybody, you know? You can't just run into people at the comedy cellar or whatever and just hang out, you know? I mean, you can, but I didn't work the, like the improv or whatever. Right. So, you know, if I did, even when I did hang out, it was awkward because I wasn't part of their crew, you know? People don't go, I and mean, we noticed that years ago too, people don't like make fun of each other out there. Like, if the cellar, but it just attacks each other. And it's kind of fun, it's cleansing, but people out there, don't seem to do that as much, so you, you always feel slightly uncomfortable. Yeah, especially if you're not from there and you don't know who's friends with who, you know, and, and who can take a joke and, right. and who's going to tell their agent or whatever, you know. He was really aggressive with me. Yeah, <laughs> and there are, a lot of, there are a lot of babies out there, you know. Like Nick Swartz, and he's a fucking baby. You guys are probably <laughs> friends with him. I like I love, Nick. Yeah, I well, you don't Nick. like Nick? No, I don't, because he's a fucking baby. Like, I like him, and I'm happy that he's gay, but... um. <laughs> <laughs> well, why no, he just added himself. He finally, he out, finally added himself. Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, cool. He he put a picture of his him and his boyfriend. For real? No, because he I ran into him at the improv, and he goes, I was talking about, uh, you know, he asked, he was talking about Twitter, and he put something on blah blah blah. I said, well, he said, you know, just you got to get more Twitter followers, and you got to go. Uh, Get, I'll do it like a shout, whatever, like a, on Friday, your follower Friday, Friday or whatever. Yeah, yeah, so he told me to do it, and then when I asked him to do it, he would, he just pretended like he we like he didn't know me, you know. But that happens in L.A. all the time. Where when they're when you're with them, they say a lot of shit, and then as soon as the conversation's over, it's it's over. It'll, it's never gonna happen. So, oh, so did you actually? Did you con did you say to him? Did you talk to him and ask him, or did you send him a text? And he yeah, just didn't I sent him. A, I saw him in person. And I sent him a text, and he's like, "Oh, I forgot." And then after a while, I was like, "Fuck him," you know. But it's, everyone in LA is like that. They, they, when you're with them, they're all your best friend. Then as right. soon as they get in their car, they're like, "I'm never gonna help that guy." I mean, I'm not talking about Neil, but I might as well be. <laughs> you are no, Neil. Let me stay at his house. So Neil's an okay guy. Neil, Neil's good with his uh, properties. <laughs> if you want, if you want to stay at his house, he'll, lay, he'll hook you up. God, you have no filter. I love this. I know. It's like radio. I had a five-hour energy drink before this, so. When you see people sometimes, like, I'll see people that we've actually interviewed on the show, and I never think they're going to, and I've sat this close to them, and you see them out there, and it's like they've never met you before in their life, and it's like, Jesus Christ, we well, talked for an hour. We've told a story. What do you mean, in L.A., you mean? 
No, I mean, just like people from here. No, like, we, literally. It's no, like we've told a story where we'll, we feel like we got a connection with somebody, and then we'll see them outside the studio door during the commercials, and they, they're looking at you like, who are you? Yeah. It's the weirdest thing sometimes. Yeah, but what do you think that is? I don't fucking know. They're in performance mode, maybe, or they it's just zoned so out? It's strange, or you'll see them walk into the bathroom, so you're like, hey, you know, and, and I have to go, Opie, we just... <laughs> Yeah. Like uh, two minutes ago. Yeah, but L.A. Not I all of them, but you get a few that are like that. So I don't know if they just put blinders on and it's just another fucking interview they got to do or what. Yeah, I, don't I don't know. know. I mean, that's weird. Well, that, that's weird to me. I, I just think that's weird. But the L.A. thing is frustrating because it was like, no matter who, it, it just it just seems like everybody like goes their own way all the time. As soon as they get in their car, like whatever just They're happened gone. is done. You know, yeah. and like w w you you know you can have a text like, well, you said this. They it's almost like it's a given that everyone's kind of full of shit and everybody yep. says yes. Mm. And then, so it's like, so if you call people out, they're like, you don't call people out. It's just, it's like, it's you understood get, you that, we're all, that, all we're, that we're all lying. Right, you know? right. Unless you're really friends. Like, you guys are really friends because you've known each other forever. Like, I'm really friends with Attell. So if Attell says something, I, I consider it legit, right. you know? Yeah. But out there, it's like, even if you're friends with guys, you're like, like, I'm sick of naming names. <laughs> But everyone loves you One out more. there. One they more. all love you. No, but like even Tom Papa was just like, <laughs> like I'm, I, I, I used to barbecue with him here, and then out there he's like, he got flaky, and I'm like, even you, you half a fag? Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. I, your wife asked me to fuck you because you wouldn't. Because you can't fuck her on four days of the week because you're half a fag, you know? And even he was just like, even he got flaking. I'm like, Tom, Papa, a two, Brute. <laughs> I was like, I, that was like the last one. I'm like, I'm getting out of here. You just, had, you just had it with Ellen. Yeah, I'm like, if Tom Papa's going to act like he doesn't know me, then I'm fucking done. How long have you been back, though? Since last year, yeah, and it's like I love it. You're Plus happy. Plus, the, the clubs are the comedy cellar's got two clubs. It's packed. It's just like your mentality is better suited for New York too. The way you think and the way you communicate, it, it's much more comfortable here for people. Like the way you communicate is fine for, for us comics, but in L.A., perfect. it's like people like, again, like you said, they all lie, and uh, everyone loves you, and then they don't know you. So it's a, just a different mentality. Of yeah, it. for the honesty, it's he's better on the East Coast. Sure. Yeah, that's true. We should, we By should, the way, Kevin's working before we break. Uh, yeah, we got to take a break here. You Butch, can you can stick around. We got Bruce Campbell coming on next, there, Kevin. Okay. Butch Bradley, where's Butch Bradley's comedy club? I have not. Uh, it's uh, City. Hideo it's a Butch Bradley comedy hideaway in Atlantic City. It's brand new, but he says it's great. And you know Butch, right? I do. He's is from it, Boston. It's yeah. in a casino? Uh no. no, no. It's like a separate thing, but it's he has like a twenty four hour liquor license because they have like weird liquor licenses down there. Oh, wow. Yeah. So he said it's great. It's like a hangout. But it's the the website is hideawayac.com. And uh, but you can just look up Butch Bradley Comedy Hideaway or Butch Bradley. You're there this weekend. Yeah, the uh, Friday and Saturday. Kevin, you guys should. I mean, uh, if you guys want to work there, he would definitely love to have you guys. So. Absolutely, I'll do it. Yeah, so it's a good, it's a good thing. Uh, go see Kevin Bradley. Kevin is God. hilarious, that was great, and a hilarious stand-up. Oh, it was great. Thanks, yeah. you guys, for having me. Of course, man. Stick Enjoy. around if you want. We got Bruce Campbell next. Love to. Uh, Florentine's got some gigs with Eddie Trunk and Jameson. Yeah, this Friday at the Waiting Room in Buffalo, Saturday at Palace Theater in Syracuse, and then um, November 19th through 21, the Funny Bone in St. Louis. Nice. And Jimmy's in Erie this Erie weekend. this Friday, Saturday, then Jacksonville, and I got San Francisco in a few weeks, uh, Louisville, Scottsdale, and a whole bunch of tour dates to announce. Freaking Kevin Brennan, right on, man. You got to come back. Did I say real. too much? Did no. I say too oh much? Oh, my God, no. Fucking hilarious! No, but Louis, I, Louis kind of set me up because he goes, he goes, you just go in there, you say whatever. And <laughs> <laughs> well, Louis, goes, has, Louis has said some shit on the show over yeah. here. Yeah, so I'm like, he well, there's no out. point in like, you know, pretending, yeah. you know, there's no point in being nice. Oh, I mean, there is some point, but I'm like, I can't get in any trouble. You know, nah, Top Papa's not going to beat me up, and I can still beat up Neil. You know. <laughs> so what do you think? And if, Sarah, you can take Neil. <laughs> If Neil, Molly if, Shannon, you might have a Molly Shannon. Shannon. If it gets back to Neil, like you were saying, a couple little things, what do you think the conversation will be between you and Neil's him? Neil's such a show business whore. He'd be like, I totally get it. You're just trying to sell tickets. Like, that's how he would look at it. He would look, it's all business. He goes, fix your hair. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a whore. He's such a whore. Like, he, it's just the way it is. My mom's a show business whore, too. And like I was thinking about that, like he gets it from my mom. What did she do? My mom, when, when Ray Romano got his show, my mom would send me all these like, like newspaper clippings from Ray's show and like write ups. I'm like, 
I'm like, Mom, you know I'm not Ray, right? Because I, it's this is not helping me at all. <laughs> Ray Romano being a fucking TV star. But she's like, yeah, but you know him and your friend. I'm like, yeah, but I'm not. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But she just she she gravitates towards like you, you know gra Neil gravitates towards like famous people because it's good for your career, you know. It was good for his career, his career, and then my mom does it too. She didn't. My mom didn't have the career that Neil did, but she would have. I'm trashing my mom. That's great. <laughs> At least she's alive. She's not dead. Well, I'm trashing look, her. Neil's a great comic. Good. Dude. No, he's not. <laughs> no, he is. <laughs> compared to who? <laughs> no, I'm at the comedy cell. He goes, Neil's really good. I go, compared to who? <laughs> I go, compared to fucking who? He's he's good, but who isn't good? You know what I mean? Like, There's a lot name, of guys let's that are people not good. who aren't good. I mean, after a while, everyone gets kind of good. You know what yeah. I mean? So I, I'm not buying this. Neil's really fucking good. And this this Neil will fight me on it. And I'll fucking punch him right in the fucking face. I'll bloody his nose. I swear to God. If he says, like, I'm really good, you're not really good. Compared to who? Compared to who? Well, all right. Well, if you get a Compared against, to Keith Robinson? If you're going to put him up against, like, David Tell or Louie, yeah. I mean, obviously, most comics aren't going to come close to okay, that. Okay, let's but. put him up against us. Is he as good as us? No. Don't look at me like that, Florentine. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people that would. Uh, I, I don't know. Who's he as good as? Give me an example. Because I, I, so I don't watch him. Who's he's he probably as good better as? than me. I'll give him credit. No, no, no. Yeah, he's no, probably he's better not. than me. Like, no, he's not. Yeah. It's a, so. it's, hard, it's a hard question. Who's he as good as? You well, see who is he like? Who is he like? I would play referee here, but I just don't know Neil's uh, stand up that, that much. Yeah, but who is he like? Who, do, who it, would you compare him to? It's like, like any comics working, he does well. Like I've just seen him like little snippets of the cellar. He always does well. Like the, you've, I've never seen him. I, I think my problem is his comedy's too soft. It's just too soft. It's too much like winking and nodding and like, all right, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Like it's I hate. I don't like that kind of comedy right. where I'm like, aren't I cute? But yeah. he's the youngest of ten, so we always thought he, he was cute. He was like, my mom would say shit like, Neil said uh, uh, something, an interesting word when he was four. He'd be like, yeah. Neil said. Uh, um, roundabout, or just some dumb word. Yeah. Am I, I'm like, I've been saying that sh word for years. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> but he's the youngest of ten, and that's when they pile on all the praise. They, they give us nothing, you know? Like, my dad used to say I was reliable. Who says that to a fucking kid? <laughs> <laughs> they go, good old reliable Kevin. I'm like, fuck you, you motherfuckers. I'm going to burn a house down. Is that reliable? Remember, yeah. I, I got some prizes. I got some surprises up my sleeve. Don't forget, he had but a Neil sweet was a dick. Fuck. Yeah, he had a sweet dick. But Neil was a genius because he would come up with words when he was four. I'm yeah. like, oh, okay. But, he, but they pile on at the end. You know, you're from a big family, right? Yeah, well, the, the, yeah, the youngest, they probably, you They know. pile on because they feel bad. They didn't do shit for anybody else. They, they, they save it all, and then they're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, we should be nice. This is our last kids. chance. Yeah, mm. and they learn you're not going to break too. I think. I think like just this will one, a difference between me and my one sister. Like the way I was strictly handled and the way she got freedom. They just realize, all right, we'll let them do what they want. They're gonna. They're not gonna fucking drop dead or collapse. Right. right. All right. We're well, right. the youngest ones. Get it. We definitely have to take a break. <laughs> oh yeah, Bruce is here. But Kevin, me. stick around if you want. Kevin Brennan yeah, yeah, is just yeah. killing it for us today. <laughs> Bruce Campbell next. Stay there. All right. All right. All right. We got uh, Kevin Brennan still in the studio. Just killed it for an hour.